If you're a fan of this channel, you probably already know that you have one of the largest brains in the animal kingdom. But you might not know that you actually have two of the largest brains in the animal kingdom, and those are just a small part of this entire group of systems in your body called the nervous system. Today, I'm going to tell you all about the nervous system in the body, the different subsystems, where they are, and what they do. So first off, what is the nervous system? The nervous system is everything in your body that's made out of neural tissue, sometimes also called nervous tissue. Nervous tissue looks like this. It's composed of essentially two parts. First is the neuron, which is for transmitting information, and second is the glial cells, or neuroglia, and those are to support the neurons by keeping them separate, keeping them in the right place, and providing nutrients. So everything we're going to talk about today is made out of these two types of cells. First off, we're going to talk about the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made of the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is mostly for all of your thinking, and the spinal cord is mostly for receiving information from all of your sensory nerves. Actually, it also includes the optic nerve, but the optic nerve is a little bit complicated and it's wonky in its own way, and I have a video about that, so you should check it out if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, the brain is pretty amazing. This paper from 2009 indicates that the average adult male brain contains about 86 billion neurons. That is an absolutely enormous number. If every neuron in your brain was one second, then your whole brain would contain 2,709 years. And because the body spends so much energy on the central nervous system, we have a unique system of protecting that brain and spinal cord. For instance, instead of the regular body fluid, your brain floats in something called cerebral spinal fluid, which has a slightly different composition, and it basically makes the brain float so that the bottom parts of the brain aren't squished by how heavy the top of the brain is. If you've ever felt a pounding in your head, that was your cerebrospinal fluid. The central nervous system is also protected by three membranes called meninges. Those are called the dura mater, meaning the tough mother, the arachnoid mater, meaning the spider mother because of its web-like structure, and the pia mater, which is the tender mother. The last thing that's important to know for this overview of the brain is that it's composed of two different types of tissue. There's this gray matter on the outside, which is mostly made of neurons for the thinking, and then the white matter, which is mostly made of axons to transmit information between the neurons. And that all is just one part of your total nervous system. There's the central nervous system, which we've just discussed, and there's also the peripheral nervous system. I mentioned before the role of the spinal cord is to coordinate uh, information from the other nerve cells. This is where that starts to come in. Of course, the peripheral nervous system isn't an entire system by itself. It also is split into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. We'll start with the somatic system because it's a bit simpler. The somatic nervous system is also called the voluntary nervous system, and its main job is to control the skeletal muscle fibers. So everything that you lift, every time you flex or move around, that's all going to be using your somatic nervous system. If this is your voluntary nervous system, then this might also be called your involuntary nervous system. In other words, it works autonomously. The autonomic nervous system deals with all of the things that happen in your body automatically. For example, making sure your internal organs and glands work, bodily functions, arousal, coughing, sneezing, the pupil of the eye dilating, anything you can think of like that. But it also isn't so simple. It's broken up into three subsystems of its own. First, we'll talk about these two, the sympathetic, and the parasympathetic nervous systems. Now the reason we're going to talk about the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems together is that they're basically paired up. You can see a simplified diagram here of the autonomic nervous system with the sympathetic fibers in red and the parasympathetic fibers in blue. The sympathetic nervous system is something that you might have heard of referred to as the fight or flight response. Essentially every time your body gets ready for any kind of action, the sympathetic nervous system is what does that. For example, when you're getting ready to do something as simple as walk, there's a notable uptick in the sympathetic nervous system. It also causes goosebumps, and it's also the reason why you're not supposed to exercise right after eating, because the sympathetic nervous system will direct blood from the non-essential area, the stomach, into the essential area of the muscles. Because this is the system that deals with basically amping you up, Poor sympathetic nervous system function can lead to insomnia, hypertension, and PTSD. Now the parasympathetic nervous system is essentially the opposite to the sympathetic nervous system. 
This deals with everything that is non-essential, or rather things that don't require an immediate response. Whereas the sympathetic nervous system controls the flight or fight response, the parasympathetic nervous system controls the rest and digest response, sometimes also called the feed and breed response. And you can roughly think of the parasympathetic nervous system doing the opposite of everything that I said the sympathetic nervous system does before. Although sometimes they do work together, but that's too complicated for this video. Now, at long last, we come to the part of the video that I'm most excited about, the enteric nervous system, also known as your second brain. Okay, so the second brain. What the hell is that? Why do we have it? Where is it? The enteric nervous system took a long while to be discovered because it's sort of hidden. It's pretty close to the central nervous system, but it actually operates distinctly and if the connection is severed, it can also operate independently. The enteric nervous system has about 500 million neurons, which is of course not as many as we have in our head, but it's the same as in the entire nervous system of say an octopus. So if you don't think 500 million neurons can do very much, just look up some videos about how smart octopuses can be. So you might be thinking, what system haven't we talked about in the body that's so important that we've had to grow half a billion neurons just to control it. Well, I'll tell you, it's the gastrointestinal tract, essentially everything having to do with eating. What does it mean for us that there's an entire second brain that just controls eating? One of the most significant findings of the enteric nervous system is that there are actually stem cells, also known as progenitor cells, which could be used medicinally to support our central nervous system, such as Alzheimer's or other brain issues. The next significant thing is that our enteric nervous system plays a huge part in our daily mood. The reason for that is it uses the same neurotransmitters as the central nervous system, but the neurotransmitters in the enteric nervous system are really important. For example, about 90% of the body's serotonin is in the enteric nervous system, as well as about 50% of the body's dopamine. So what you'd expect from that is when the enteric nervous system sends signals to the central nervous system, you would get happier. And indeed, that's what happens. This paper from 2011 showed that responses to sad emotion were reduced by having fat in the stomach. So if you've ever eaten fatty foods while you've been sad, this is your body trying to give you more dopamine. And actually there's another study, this one from 2011, which showed that stress makes you secrete a hormone called ghrelin, which then makes you seek out fatty food. And finally, direct stimulation of the vagus nerve, part of the enteric nervous system, actually treats depression, even with people whose depression is normally treatment resistant. So essentially your second brain deals with not just eating, but also depression, your reward system, motivation, Pretty amazing stuff, especially considering that this is all relatively newly discovered. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Thanks to Zachary Collins for being a super supporter on Patreon, as well as my other supporters, Hyde, Jordan Beagle, Justin Davey, and Mike Zimmerman. It's really tough finding the time to make videos at the moment, and I only did it because of you five. So thanks very much. If you want to join those people on the Wall of Awesome and help motivate me to make more videos, Check out the description below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, see you next time.